Hatches, Matches and Dispatches, Part 2, Finding a Marriage. Kira Koto, welcome everyone to this online introduction on how to start your research into your family history. I'm Lynn, a family history librarian on the Tuakiri Identity Floor at Tūrlunga Library. This session follows on from our online class on forms and charts and is the second in a series of three entitled Hatches, Matches and Dispatches. Today we will cover learning how to find a marriage. We will be focusing on Christchurch and New Zealand resources, but we will also show you some other lines of research you can follow. These sessions will not be covering specialised whakapapa research. You can email library at ccc.govt nz for help in this area. Before we start, here are a few points to remember. Begin by talking to people, particularly older relatives, to find out what they know and maybe what they think they know. Family myths may not be strictly accurate, but they can sometimes provide a clue to follow up. Start with what you know, names of your parents, where they were born or grew up, names of grandparents and approximate dates for where they were born, grew up, got married and died, where they lived, what their occupation was, maybe even their religion. If in your research you come across some information that may be helpful or can confirm a name, date or event, note where you find it so you can go back and find it again. It's best to confirm your research findings in at least two places, preferably three. Misspellings of names are common, Dates of life events may not be recorded accurately. Transcribed records contain errors. Just because you found a person's name, it does not mean it's your ancestors. Many people may have the same name, so check and check again for that corroborating evidence. You may have found some information that fits, then further down the track you find something else that throws that first conclusion into doubt. You may have to go back and start again, which is why it's important to note where you've been with your research so you can track it again. Sometimes you just can't find an answer. Sometimes you just have to accept that, that and move on. But maybe later a new source will become available and you might get that answer after all. Lots of patience, dogged work, going around in circles but are avoiding rabbit holes and sometimes following that leap of intuition and thinking about what could have happened. But you need to find evidence and confirm it did happen. Why do we start with life events, i.e. births, deaths and marriages? It's really because these are probably the most reliable pieces of information that can help pin down an ancestor's life, probably the closest you can get to the truth. We start by looking at records that come under a formal system of governance or control of information. So this means government records and church records. So births, marriages and deaths registered with the government and baptisms, marriages and funerals or burials carried out and registered by a church. Further into your research, you may need to look at school and employment records. You may be lucky enough to have some family records of your own. The old tradition of recording family events in the family Bible down through the generations or someone may have done some research already on your family tree. But be very cautious of the information researched by others. It may have been uncovered some time before a lot more information became available online. Mistakes such as confusing different generations and misidentifications can happen very easily. Check for yourself. More and more newspapers are being digitised on platforms such as Papers Past, and these can provide notices of births, engagements, marriages and deaths and funerals. Often, additional names of family members can be picked up this way. And if you are able to find that marriage in several different places, then you can be pretty certain of the basic facts and confirm that piece of your research. And now to how to find that marriage. Remember the point about starting with the known. It's really helpful to be able to narrow down your search to a specific country if possible. And also helpful if you know the town or city. If it's Christchurch, then Christchurch City Libraries has a lot of useful local information. And we have access to useful resources that have national coverage. Names and approximate times of arrival in New Zealand are useful. 
Remember that we think in terms of 20 years as a generation, so can work backwards to get a rough estimate. Just keep asking yourself those questions. And remember that we're starting with the known, so we want to confirm that before we start working backwards. The Church Registers Index is unique to Christchurch City Libraries and is a result of the partnership between the Library and the Canterbury branch of the New Zealand Society of Genealogists. It is an alphabetical index of transcriptions on catalogue records of records from the registers of churches around Christchurch and surrounding areas. The transcripts have been made by volunteers copying from the original registers. These registers list the details of baptisms, marriages and funerals or burials. The service is carried out by the minister of the church. It is not comprehensive. If you can't find a name, it doesn't mean your ancestor wasn't married here in Christchurch, but you may need to check other sources. The entries are mostly Anglican, with some Methodist and Presbyterian, and a small number of Roman Catholic and other denominations. More information about the church registers is available on the Christchurch City Library's website. If you are lucky enough to strike gold, you may get some really useful information. What you do get depends on what was entered in the original record and can vary, but for a marriage you can hopefully get the full name of the bride and groom, the date they were married, their ages, occupations, birthplace, place of residence, usual and also present, the names of their parents including the occupations of the fathers and usually the maiden name of the mother the name of the officiating minister, the church where the marriage took place, and the name of any witnesses. Note with this marriage, the bride has been divorced and the record gives the date of the decree absolute. This could be helpful when trying to track down the first marriage as her name in this registration is her maiden name. For marriages that occurred outside of Christchurch, and those that did but aren't in the church registers, the best tool is the online database of New Zealand births, deaths and marriages historical records, often referred to as NZBDM. You can use the website to search for historical births, deaths and marriage records and order printouts or certificate copies of the relevant entries. Information available includes births that occurred at least 100 years ago, stillbirths that occurred at least 50 years ago, marriages and eventually civil unions that occurred 80 years ago, and deaths that occurred at least 50 years ago or the deceased date of birth was at least 80 years ago. The Department of Internal Affairs has placed limits on when historical records are made accessible by the general public, as shown before, so finding a marriage that is more recent than 80 years ago can be challenging. So the first alternative is the New Zealand B Births, Deaths and Marriage Index. This covers the years from 1854 to 1990. Note that other countries also place restrictions on open access to records to protect individual privacy and prevent identity fraud. The information you can get does depend on the time period you're looking for at, but it does also give you a reference number which you can use to order a copy of the marriage certificate or printout, for which there will be a charge. You will get the name and the year, and for births and deaths from 1848 to 1955, you can use the district keys listing, which will help you narrow down the location of the birth and the year quarter. Sadly, marriages do not have this. Other avenues for looking for locations without having to purchase the printout of the certificate include papers passed, looking at the electoral rolls of the time to see where they were registered. The index is available on microfiche at Turlonga Library. If you are not in Christchurch, check to see if your local library has it, or email us and we'll try and find the marriage for you. The issue for people searching from 1942 up to 1956 is that the fiche does not give the name of the spouse. From 1957 onwards, they do. To help search for that period, we have the New Zealand Marriage 1836 to 1956 CD ROM from New Zealand Society of Genealogists, which we can check. 
The beauty of that is that you do not need to know both surnames and you can easily pick up second marriages. To purchase printouts of non-historical, i.e. post-1943 marriages, you will need a real me login. Information from the New Zealand Marriages CD-ROM showing the first marriage in 1927 and then the second in 1931. We will look for a divorce file a bit later on. The next resource is Papers Past. This is a database of digitised historical newspapers from throughout New Zealand. The coverage varies from one province to another. At present, we have digital access to the press up to 1979, so this gives those people living or researching in Christchurch a big advantage as it's much easier to search a newspaper online when you haven't got an exact date. The plan for the press is to be up to the end of 1994 by the end of this year. Try searching on marriage or wedding and the family name. Often there is not only a marriage re notice, but a description of the wedding, including who attended, what they wore, etc. You can also search for engagement notices. The marriage notices in papers past will sometimes give you an address, or at least a town or district. Here we have Boot in Avon Street, which is now Hurley Street. Watch for street name changes. And we can go back to NZBDM online to confirm. Or, for those who have access to Ancestry, you could try searching the New Zealand electoral rolls for the name of the bride and groom. If you are having trouble finding a time period for a marriage, checking when the bride first appears in the electoral roll can help narrow it down. The New Zealand electoral rolls are accessible on Ancestry up to 1981. Then for more recent years, try your local library. In Christchurch, only Tūranga holds recent rolls for all electorates in New Zealand. If you belong to a library outside the Christchurch network, try asking there for print or microfiche copies of electoral rolls or street directories. And remember that the listings are alphabetical by surname, so you need to scan all the people with this name you're searching for just to see who is living at a particular address. Street directories can be useful, but will list just the one name for that address. And there can be a bit of publication lag, so the information isn't necessarily current by the time that the directory was published. Now we will move on to intentions to marry. Archives New Zealand, Wellington branch, hold notices of intention to marry 1856 to 1956. There is also a national index available from 1856 to 1880. The files tell how long a partner in a prospective union had been living at their present address, where a partner was a minor, the parent or guardian who gave permission for the marriage to go ahead is usually mentioned. There is also information about where a parent or guardian was unavailable through being dead or overseas. The information on an intention to marry file is not always accurate, either intentionally or accidentally. Archives New Zealand and Wellington hold a card index for 1856 to 1881. There is an online index to 1882 to 1899 on Archives New Zealand website. After 1899, you will need to know the approximate date and the place of marriage. Guides to the registers in red binders in the reading room can then be used to locate the relevant registers. The Alexander Turnbull Library in Wellington holds some notices of intention to marry for 1855. Our Wellington Archive holds registers of notices of intention to marry for the whole of New Zealand for the period 1856 to 1956. Other archives have some regional registers. Intentions to marry registers are restricted for 80 years from date of closure. Information recorded on intention to marry notices may include date on which the notice was registered, full name, marital status, occupation and age of both parties, place of residence at time of notice and length of residence in registration district, parent or guardian's names if either of the couple were a minor, 
a number which corresponds to the marriage register entry and marriage certificate number for the couple indicates that a marriage took place. Place where the marriage is to be solemnised and the minister or registrar who will conduct the marriage. Our Wellington archive holds intention to marry records for the whole of New Zealand from 1856 to 1956. The Marriage Act of 1854 and later acts decreed that one member of each couple must complete a notice of intention to marry for the local registrar of marriages before the marriage could take place. This notice and payment of the prescribed fee allowed a certificate, really a marriage licence, to be issued current for three months. This certificate authorised a minister or registrar to celebrate the marriage. After the marriage took place, the minister or registrar had to enter the marriage in a register book and then send a certified copy of the details to the Registrar General of Births, Deaths and Marriages to be entered in a central registrar. Archives New Zealand also holds divorce records. A divorce, now dissolution, is the official termination of a marriage. Once a decree absolute, the final decree in the proceedings has been granted, it becomes lawful for the prospective parties to marry again, as if the prior marriage had been ended by death. Archives holds divorce registers and files which have been transferred by the Supreme or High Courts. Each of our archives hold the registers and files of its region, though not all courts have transferred their records. Other divorce registers held in Wellington were compiled by the Crown Law Office for the period 1868 to 1969. These include entries for divorces which were not found in the registers of regional Supreme Courts. There is a 100-year restriction on access to Supreme or High Court divorce records. Researchers will need to apply to the court register for access permission to restrictive files. Diane Wilson has spent over 40 years researching New Zealand records and indexes supported by her army of volunteers. It is a free collection to access. Some of the records that are indexed and searchable in the Wilson collection database include early settlers, burial and cremation records, World War I, electoral rolls and marriage records. Here we have a marriage record for James Alfred Boot. Access to overseas records has improved dramatically in the last 10 years with the growth of Ancestry and other similar databases. Check out your local library to see what databases you can access via your library card and look out for free trials. Ancestry is getting a better coverage of New Zealand Oceania material and also records from non-English speaking European countries. Filtering by country before searching can reduce the number of hits to trawl through. Find My Pass has less US content but is strong on UK and Australian content and passenger lists leaving the UK. Family Search has a partnership with Archives New Zealand and they are loading a lot of their digitised records onto Family Search, wills and probates, passenger lists, so good for New Zealand material but also useful for overseas records and free. My Heritage, unlike Ancestry and Family Search, Christchurch City Library members can access from home using their library cards. If you have Scottish heritage, Scotland's people is extremely helpful and free to use for those preliminary searches, though you have to pay for copies of any records, including those original records, which can be more helpful sometimes than transcripts. Irish genealogy. Some official records were lost in 1922 in a when a bombardment and fire destroyed the public records office, including wills and records from some census years, but more material is becoming available online. For example, parish records and the recently launched Beyond 22, Ireland's virtual record treasury. Searching for national archives and records from a specific country can throw up some useful websites. Remember to search for state or country records, as well as the national, i.e. central government ones. 
Church records are really useful and for marriages can often give more information than the government registers. Family history enthusiasts are generating a lot of databases that provide access to records such as passenger lists, but be careful to confirm the source of the information. An organisation, as opposed to an individual, may have more robust research capacity and processes. So looking at the United Kingdom, you can see there are a lot of free websites with material that may help your research. But if you come up against a brick wall when trying to track a marriage, use a bit of lateral thinking and approach the problem from a different angle. Military records will hopefully give a date of birth. Remember the year of birth may not be accurate if they were trying to enlist under age. Also the next of kin, mother, father, siblings, place of residence and previous employment. Immigration records will vary a lot, but there's a good chance you'll get country, place of birth, embarkation, occupation, age, whether they're married, um, spouse's name. It's interesting to see more recent immigration information becoming available. Naturalisation records will depend on the country. Note in this example the arrival year in the US is wrong. It should be 1923, as confirmed with a passenger list, but gives the date and place of birth. This particular discovery sparked a new line to follow in the US which hadn't been considered before. If you are a Christchurch local, come and visit us on the Tuakiri Identity Floor of Tūranga. That's the second floor. Or drop into your local library to see what they have on offer. And keep an eye on the Christchurch City Library's website for more family history related sessions. And email us if you need some help. Just a reminder to explore some of the New Zealand websites for hints on research and access to records. And don't forget to check out the additional information on those overseas sites as well. Save yourself potential frustration by checking the date range and scope of their databases first. <laughs>